So Steve Bannon was in court yesterday in his contempt of Congress case. How did that go? And more importantly, do we really think his trial will go in July? Let's talk about that because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So presidential advisor and all around Trump lackey, Steve Bannon was in court again in his contempt of Congress case. That case is set for trial this July and it's being presided over by a Trump appointed judge, Judge Carl Nichols. And based on some of Judge Nichols rulings, he's not proving to be the best, most independent, most fair judge on the federal bench. We'll talk more about that in a future video. And Judge Nichols in the Bannon status hearing decided some issues. He discussed some issues. He ruminated about some issues. He pontificated about some issues, all of which generated a series of headlines about the latest Bannon status hearing. Judge orders DOJ to produce documents related to decision to prosecute Steve Bannon. A Trump appointed judge said he's inclined to block a key part of Steve Bannon's contempt of Congress defense. Judge grills feds on yada, yada, yada. And several other headlines that were generated as a result of this most recent Steve Bannon court appearance. Let me say this, friends, regarding the upcoming trial date set for July in Bannon's case, I don't think the trial will actually happen in July. Why do I say that? Well, let's pull back to a 30,000 foot overview and talk about how federal prosecutors play the long game with a guy like Steve Bannon, a guy who committed any number of crimes beyond the one that is just charged in court presently, contempt of Congress. And actually he's indicted on two counts of contempt of Congress, one for violating the subpoena by just blowing it off, not showing up for testimony, and the second by violating a subpoena for documents, just blowing that off as well, not supplying the, the documents that were subpoenaed by Congress. Here's how the feds handle a guy generally speaking, like Steve Bannon. Federal prosecutors will rarely go to trial in a one count standalone case if they can properly indict a whole bunch of crimes in one indictment and try them all together to the jury. Let me use a hypothetical to, to illustrate the point. Let's assume a guy steals a car. And then the day after he steals the car, he uses the stolen car in a bank robbery. During the bank robbery, he discharges a firearm and he injures a bank security guard, but it's a non-fatal injury. The guard is sent to the hospital. Now let's assume the law enforcement authorities investigate the crime and they pretty quickly get enough evidence to charge the defendant with stealing the car. Maybe he was caught on surveillance video. He wasn't wearing a mask. So the evidence is strong that he stole the car and he is charged with auto theft. However, he is wearing a mask and he's wearing gloves at the time of the bank robbery. So the, the law enforcement authorities don't quite have enough evidence to immediately charge him with the bank robbery or the shooting of the guard. So they only charge and indict that auto theft crime. And that case is now in court, just like Steve Bannon's contempt of Congress cases in court. And motions are filed and the judge is resolving issues in the auto theft case. And then as that auto theft case is in court heading toward a trial date, law enforcement authorities get a break in the bank robbery case. They get enough evidence and they can now charge him with a bank robbery and the non-fatal shooting of the bank security guard. So they bring what we call a superseding indictment. 
They bring all of the charges that they have enough evidence to indict. The auto theft, the bank robbery, the shooting of the guard. And then a new trial date is set. It gets pushed well into the future. And the parties, the prosecutor and the defense, begin litigating motions and issues involving what is now a significantly larger case, auto theft, bank robbery, shooting. Then let's assume that as the trial date approaches, unfortunately, the security guard does not survive his injuries. So he dies. Now the case includes a murder charge. So what happens? The prosecutors return another superseding indictment. And now that indictment includes auto theft, bank robbery, and murder. And the trial date, once again, is pushed well off into the future. That is what I believe will happen with Steve Bannon's case. At the moment, he is just charged with a simple, straightforward contempt of Congress charge. Two charges, technically. But based on the public reporting alone, we have seen ample evidence that Steve Bannon was part of a conspiracy to, you know, overturn the results of a presidential election, to de deny Joe Biden his rightful win, to reinstall Donald Trump illegally, unconstitutionally as president for a second term. So I strongly suspect, based on that evidence, and DOJ obviously knows a lot more about the evidence than we know. We just are going by public reporting. But even the public reporting supports the conclusion that Steve Bannon should be indicted for a conspiracy to commit crimes against the United States or defraud the United States, what we call a 371 conspiracy. It violates 18 United States Code Section 371. He could also be charged I suspect, based on public reporting, with a seditious conspiracy, with rebellion and insurrection, with any other number of charges in violation of our federal laws. And that's what I believe will happen long before the July trial date. The prosecutors will begin to ask the grand jury to vote out superseding indictments to add charges to Steve Bannon's criminal resume to add indictments, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, to add defendants, perhaps, to a Steve Bannon indictment. Why do I say that? Well, Roger Stone's right-hand man, Enrique Tario, was just indicted. So there's a very good chance that we may see Roger Stone in the near future being indicted and perhaps being combined in an indictment with his fellow co-conspirator, like Steve Bannon, like Enrique Tario. So only time will tell, friends, whether justice will come in part or in whole for Steve Bannon. In part, because he's already indicted for contempt of Congress. In whole, because he should be indicted in a superseding indictment with all of the other crimes that DOJ has enough evidence to prove. I believe that Steve Bannon will be indicted. I believe justice will come in whole and not just in part for Steve Bannon because justice matters. Friends, as always, thank you for tuning in to these daily videos here at Justice Matters. As you may know, we're an all-volunteer outfit here posting a legal analysis video every day, seven days a week. And we can only do that because of your support. Um, if you would like to more formally support our all-volunteer efforts, our mission, our content, please feel free to go over to patreon.com. You can sign up to become a patron. And if you do, I'll send you some Team Justice and Justice Matters stickers and a personal handwritten note of thanks. And you'll also get all kinds of behind-the-scenes stuff um, about how we do business here at Justice Matters. And thank you, thank you to the many of you who have come over to Patreon.com and are supporting our efforts and have decided to become part of Team Justice proper. Thank you. And as always, friends, please stay safe. Please stay tuned. And I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.